Hi everyone, I am Maribel. I'm the counselor here at Merced Adult School. And this week we're gonna be talking about how to boost your self-esteem. Um, but before I start talking about self-esteem, I kind of wanted to talk about self-confidence as well because self-confidence and self-esteem sometimes get confused or used interchangeably. So self-confidence, what is self-confidence? Is your belief in your ability to do something. So you might have low, you know, self-confidence and something because maybe it's your first time doing something. But you can build self-confidence by doing things over and over again. Once you know something, you've been able to do it over and over again, your self-confidence goes up. So I believe that your self-confidence is easy to attain and having higher self-confidence because the more you do something, the better you get at it and the better you get at it, the more confident you feel about it. But on the other side, we have self-esteem. Self-esteem is our belief in our self-worth, like our worthy of happiness, is how we feel about ourselves from within, it's deep. Like, uh, it's who you think you are and that thought and you believe, uh, are we good enough the way that we are? but it's, it is really the root of everything. So I think it's important to address it and and give you ideas of how to be able to boost your self-esteem because it is deeper. It really does affect the quality and success in your life, like your relationships, your careers, um, and then your happiness, the happiness level, what you achieve in your life or that you achieve in your life. and in all honesty, we know that people want to feel important, especially our teens. Um, and the sad part is that sometimes when they have low self-esteem, they don't feel they don't feel important. There's suicide. So I definitely feel like there's a need to educate and to help others in regarding how to boost your self-esteem. So let's start with the six pillars of self-esteem by Nathaniel Brandon. He explains some, there's six of them. And so I wanna talk about those two. And then I'll talk about um, other tips on how to boost your self-esteem. So, okay, the first one is make sure you put yourself a, pr a priority. Take care of yourself. Do self-care, because that's how you start. Again, it's within. Get out of your head and into your body. That, what does that mean? maybe not watch TV, limited to an hour a day, you know? Um, shower, I know that feels good though. Showering in the morning, especially exercise, brush your teeth, eat healthy. When you do that, you get this natural high. You get these endorphins that make you feel good. Care more about your scent and smell good. I know, right? I put on, some perfume this morning because when you look good you feel good and when you smell good you feel and act more confident and guess what people notice it so um you feel more put together and have much more positive self-image that's why make sure you put yourself as a priority Another thing that you can do for as you're making yourself a priority, make sure you talk to yourself. These are positive affirmations, you know, like when you wake up in the morning, I will have a good day today. You know, they say that your attitude towards something, it's everything. You can make or break your morning. You might have a bad situation, but you have control over your attitude on things. So saying these positive affirmations in the morning, I'm smart. I can do this. Saying things out loud, you know, that you want to believe in. I am enough. These are good, definitely. But before actually talking to yourself and saying things out loud, I forget you also want to like think it first. Meditate, make meditation a habit. Because yeah, you have to think it first. Reframe your neg any negative thoughts you might have and rewire your thinking of self. Create your own thoughts, but but be realistic, you know? You don't wanna be like, oh, today I wanna learn how to fly. You know, like that's not realistic. You know, you have to think 
think it and you have to believe it. So once you think it, once you believe it, you know, like that you, you know, you're enough, you're smart, you're beautiful, then you can say them out loud. So meditate and then have these positive affirmations every morning. So you remind yourself of the, that you're a good person, that you're going to do your best today. You're going to work hard. Okay. So that's the first pillar. Um, more of being present with yourself, starting with yourself. The second pillar is self-acceptance. Be happy with who you are. Make sure you kill that inner pessimist. <laughs> we are our own worst critic. I always do that. I'm always really critical of myself. So loosen up and don't be so rigid. Improve what you can and accept what you can't. Sometimes we get so caught up with like trying to control everything and trying to make everything perfect. And you really have to sit down and say, what can I control? What can I change? And then accept those things that you can't. Stop comparing yourself. And we do this. We are so guilty of this, especially as women, that we like to compare ourselves. Oh, yeah, you know, she's prettier and yeah, she's thinner, you know, uh, there's that especially as women. I know it's everyone, but I feel like it's really bigger with it in the women. We try to chase perfection and we realize that perfection is in the eye of the beholder, right? Um, think about and ask yourself this question. Would you hang out with yourself? So if you can say, yes, this is a positive person, that's a good thing. Be yourself. Cherish your individuality. Accept yourself. The self-acceptance. Number three is self-responsibility. Be responsible for your own actions. If you make a mistake, own it. Don't be afraid to admit mistakes. Hey, no one's perfect, but there's so much respect you have for someone who can say, I was wrong. Admit that they're wrong because they're human, right? So get up and keep fighting and pushing forward. Self-responsibility. Number four, self-assertiveness. Believe in yourself. Stand up for yourself. Tell and teach people how to treat you. This is having maybe healthy confrontations. And be assertive. Sometimes, you know, we want to stay quiet and not fight. But if we let people and not say something, like that wasn't very nice, then they will do it again and again. And I'll keep crushing, you know, your esteem. So make sure you stand up for yourself, be your own hero, have that, that assert assertiveness, because then you feel good about yourself. Number five, li living purposely. Have a purpose, you're either growing or you're dying. Ooh, that was Tony Robbins, what Tony Robbins said. Set goals. Learn something new like a skill. Help. It really helps your sense of accomplishment, a faith in yourself, and your, it gives you that personal growth. And I think that was deep because if you're not learning something, you're not growing and you're staying the same and then you're being left behind. So that's why it's really important to challenge yourself, especially right now during quarantine. Make sure that you're learning something new, a new word. If you're an ESL, one of my our ESL students, um, even me reading at least 15 minutes a day, 
that helps a lot. I started reading a lot because I started school. <laughs> There's a lot of reading and I love it. But I do listen to a lot more YouTube videos than anything else. So make sure you're growing and you, you have a purpose. Number six, the last pillar is personal integrity. They say character is what you do when no one is looking. Make sure you hold yourself to higher standards. Align what you say with how you act. It's like walking the talk. I think that's huge. I hold integrity huge. Like it's, it's really one of my, I will judge you because we all judge, but not out loud based on your character. Doing what's right. It's kind of like ethics, right? Which are higher standards than law, I believe. So. So that's, those are the six pillars. The self, you know, um, have a, make sure you put yourself as a priority. Be self-aware. Um, self-acceptance, number two. Self-responsibility, number three. Self-assertiveness, number four. Living purposely, number five. And personal integrity, number six. So these are some other tips that I would recommend I found. Hang out with people who make you feel good about yourself. Get, get rid of the time wasters. Pick and choose your friends wisely. If they're not adding positively to your life, don't waste your time. Sometimes we get people who just wanna complain all the time and all they do is complain, they drain you with this energy. And you're like, Ugh, and they never, you know, and then that's okay, but if they all they do is drain your energy, mm -mm. if they don't make you feel good or special, mm-mm. You, you're not, my time is really precious, you know, cause time, we all have the same, but we all lose it and we can't ever gain it. So make sure you pick and choose your friends and they are good to you. They bring, make you feel good about yourself. If they don't make you feel good about yourself, bye bye. Okay, create an awesome log. This is gonna help you like with reminding you of your past accomplishments or successes. Keep track of personal wins, victories at work. Um, and if you have a hard time, ask your friends, ask your coworkers to help you. If you ever need to pick me up, learn to celebrate yourself and be proud of yourself. I think that's big because sometimes we, I mean, we have been in the dumps and where you feel bad about yourself. And then sometimes you need something to pick you up, make you feel better. Some people resort to alcohol or sometimes people resort, you know, to other maybe unhealthy coping mechanisms. But if you have this beautiful or nice, awesome log where you feel good about yourself, you can remind yourself it's good. I think it's a healthy thing. It's a good thing. It's something I'm going to start doing. Um, or, you know, some people do a jar put things in there that you feel makes you awesome. Maybe have people write things about you and put it in there and then surprise yourself and open one up. That would be awesome. Good idea, mm, good idea. Another thing that was suggested, learn to play an instrument. It really helps you get in touch with your emotions, be able to be vulnerable and channel your feelings to understand yourself. Oh my God, I'm a musician. I play, I love it. I don't think I'll ever not have music in my life. So it's big. If you can, do it. Not everyone will or could or find it easy, but it's really gratifying. Okay. Another thing, re 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 reconnect with your play. Take a break. Just be and enjoy being a kid again. It increases product productivity and releases stress and satisfaction. I think there's research that says out there that people who work either less days, take more breaks, they are more productive. And I think it's the same thing around throughout the day. Make sure you take a walk, you know, or make sure you, there's people who have little basketball courts in their, in their uh, office and start playing. People have, you know, play little golfs in their office go to the staff lounge 
or, you know, a break room and just do something. Basketball, throwing, you know, your the ball to your friends. Take that break because then you'll be more productive. And if you're more productive, then you get things more done. If you get more things done, you're more satisfied with your work. And if you're more satisfied with your work, then you feel good about yourself. Another thing that's be effect for me is help others. Small acts of kindness tell people, you know, tell people of that what you like about them. Help them jumpstart their positive thinking. Invite others to meet themselves. Oh, that was deep. Sometimes you don't see, you only see your flaws, you're like I said, your own worst critic. But when other people tell you things, like you start seeing that person, you know, and it's really nice. And I think we take that for granted. But I always tell like, oh, I love your hair. It's beautiful. You look beautiful. Or, you know, I really like your eyes. You know, they, they really, you know, oh, your smile or whatever it is. I, you know, tell people what they you like about them. So good. It feels so good. So I want to do this. I want to leave you with some homework. When you receive a compliment, look at them in the eye and say, thank you. And I'm going to say that I've been guilty. When someone tells me a compliment, I feel like they're just saying it just to say it to make me feel good. But now I am going to take this homework and say, if someone tells me something positive, I'm going to look at them and say, and take it in. Take the compliment in. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Another thing is that I want everyone to do is write th 10 things you admire about yourself. If you need help, maybe ask your friends, ask your coworkers, family. I can tell you if they love you, they'll find something good. Sometimes it's hard for us to find something good, but trust me, ask those people around you who care about you very much and I promise you they will find something for you. And that kind of jump starts your self-esteem you know like having that positive self-esteem so anyhow i hope that helped you guys i know it's a little long video and i took a little longer today but if you have any suggestions please let me know um, in the comments below if you want to know where i got some of this information i'll have it in the link below okay thank you have a good day